Hi, my name is Ron Dorn. I'm the co-developer of the GPH-112 lab with Ryan Heinzman. Um, I'm also the coordinator for all the GPH-112 and GPH-111 courses. So in trying to figure out how we could do physical geography online effectively for students and have it be something that would be worthwhile of your time and your cost, not only just meeting the lab science requirement, but enriching your life, we turn to video games. This is surprising to me. I'm not a video game player. I'm 62 years old. I've been a professor since I was about 27. It's been a long time. Started at Texas Tech, went to ASU, and I've been in all sorts of teaching environments, from chalk to whiteboards to slides to computers. And so the evolution of having you play video games to understand online physical geography is something that took me by surprise. But when we started investigating the concept, it seemed actually unnatural. So I'll explain why in the context of showing you how to play a video game from the perspective of a professor, an old duffer, who didn't know how to play a video game environment to start with. And hopefully, if you're nervous about it, I'll help you get over that nervousness. If you're young and you play video games, I hope you're chuckling. I don't mind you laughing at me. It's really awesome that you understand and hopefully you can provide encouragement for the other students in the class who don't have your proficiency. So I'm gonna start sharing the screen. And the context of this presentation is going to be the lab, why is the Grand Canyon so lab? And I've downloaded on the right, the PDF version of the stage zero file. Stage zero is the way I want you to begin to explore the labs where you're beginning to learn about the video game and the physical geography environment from a low stress context. So let's start the game, click the button, when you click the button and the game will build, you should hear your computer heat up. Don't worry about it. The reason why your he computer heats up is that the video game is allowing you to see a huge amount of information. Your processor doesn't use very much if you use a browser or Microsoft Word or Excel or a typical program, but in the case of a video game, you're using a graphical processor card, you're using a lot of RAM, so your computer will heat up. It'll also tend to heat up towards the beginning where it needs to build the video game world. And then it'll cool down as it needs less RAM and less processing. So the first thing that confused the heck out of me was what's going on with moving around in the game. There's a camera in the video game and that camera is what you're changing the position of. And you need to use your mouse. If you have a laptop, you're probably getting frustrated with your trackpad. Some trackpads just don't work very well at all for video game environments. So plug in an external mouse. I actually like using a trackball. That's a ball inside, so there's rings and there's balls to move. And it was much more intuitive to me, but I'm using just an external mouse and I'm taking the mouse, the external mouse, and I'm moving it from side to side and I'm changing the camera angle. Then I'm using the little ball on the mouse to make the camera angle move back or move forward. And I can also, when I move the mouse itself forward, I get into a more overhead view. And when I pull the mouse back, I get into a more of a bleak angle view, and then I zoom in. Another aspect of the game to realize is that when you're in the game environment, you can't touch any of the bells and whistles you see on the screen. You can't look at the menu, you can't move your mouse around, so you have to hit the escape button. The escape button allows you to access the mouse, and you could also in turn access other programs if you have them on your desktop but you need to hit the escape button. So I'm gonna hit it again and go back into game playing mode and hit it again and go out of game playing mode and look at the menu. I have a menu here, I can explore.
clicking on different things. So mess around and just get familiar with the different aspects of the menu. You can take it off right here. Um, there's the issue of moving the avatar, but before I begin to move the avatar, I wanna get you familiar with the compass rows here. The outer ring displays the direction that the camera is looking. So right now, both the avatar and the camera are looking north. But if I get back in gameplay mode and I swing the camera angle around to look at the avatar's face, the camera is looking to the south and the avatar is still looking to the north. Another thing you have control over here is the geologic key. I know it's a bit frustrating, to not be able to see everything, but it's pretty hard to get all this information on just on one game board. And so you'll just have to deal with it in the scrolling aspects of it. The map key has different pieces of it. There's surficial material, there's the Paleozoic rocks that are the layered materials you see in the background, and then there are much older rocks, Neo-Proterozoic, Mesoproterozoic, and Paleoproterozoic are things that you find way deep down in the Grand Canyon, and they're not so much a big part of the slab. So we're focused on the Paleozoic part of the map key. Another thing is this inset map. The default of the inset map is, allows you to zoom in or zoom out and see either the geology the DEM or the digital ele elevation model where high elevations are light in color and dark elevations are low. And then a Landsat image where you can see the Colorado River, the Kaibab Plateau on the North Rim and the Coconino Plateau on the South Rim. You can also change the slider bars so that you can see that the game changes completely to that Landsat scene but the default is for you to have a focus on the geology world and with just a little bit of this shader called triplanar. Now let's get into moving. So I'm going to hit escape to go back in game mode and I'm gonna have the camera angle be behind the rabbit and I'm hitting the space bar. The space bar makes the rabbit jump. You can use keys of W, and S to go forward and backward, and D goes right and A goes left, or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard. I like the arrow keys just cause I'm an old Duffer professor and it makes sense that when I hit straight ahead, the arrow, the avatar goes straight ahead. Um, in order to make the avatar move, you need to hit the space bar and the um, arrow key at the same time. And sometimes you won't be able to make the avatar actually jump up the cliff face. So you have to change angles, get the avatar. So I'm, const I'm, my, I, I'm constantly hitting the, so my space bar is perpetually down. So the avatar is jumping up and down constantly. Every time it hits the game board reality, it jumps and I'm moving the arrow key to be able to see if I can actually get the avatar up on top of the rim. And there's a momentum factor in the physics engine that allows you to pick up speed. Voila, hooray, I made it to the top. I hope that you play around with the video game, get used to the controls before you try to get involved in the lab develop a comfort level. And if you have a child, if you're a parent and you have a child, get your kids help in playing the video game. They're natural at it. Or if you don't have a kid, see if you can borrow one from the neighborhood. Hopefully the COVID crisis is over. If not, you can also check out YouTube and how to mess around and play with game mechanics. I hope you found this humorous and perhaps a tiny bit helpful if you're nervous about playing games. 
bye-bye from COVID-19 in a room with my grandbaby supplies in the background.